Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. Since the last episode, I installed a mod called Equipment Hotkeys. And that allows you to turn your RoboPorts on and off at will uh, with the F2 key. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Um, some of the other function keys let you activate, I think, night vision goggles and things like that. Let's take a look here. So I'm not guessing. Uh, okay, exoskeleton you can turn on and off. Roboport is F2, and then night vision is F8. And then it also, as I mentioned in the last episode, will automatically disable your personal Roboport when you get in a vehicle. And that was, that was the main feature that I was after. Okay, so I've got all the ores now coming out of these warehouses and going up to the first three stations. Uh, the last one I don't need yet, just because I don't have any ores to put in it. Um, so the second one contains tin, cobalt, aluminum, and lead. This one has gold, silver, and zinc. And then uh, I still got another input available on this one. Actually, why do I have four different ores in here? Uh-oh. I've got a mixed belt there. I'm going to have to fix that. I just noticed that now. Oh, okay. I see the problem here. Hmm. It's because this inserter was side loading onto this, or the splitter was, rather. All right, so I've got, uh, looks like I've got iron ore then mixed in with the silver or tin or zinc. I think it was zinc. All right. Well, that's okay. We'll just, ugh. okay. I am full. All right, so let me get rid of my stuff. Take the iron ore. Let's get that iron ore out. Get that iron ore out. And then I think if I hit shift, or no, control E. No. Shift E. Oh, okay. It sorts when I open up the chest. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. All right, let's get rid of the iron first. Why do I see all that stuff there? Oh, okay. I think it's going to fade away in a minute. Sorry for the misclicks. All right. So we got a little too much iron in there. And the other warehouses are slowly filling up. Okay. Okay. So I think I got rid of almost everything. I got some coke there that I don't need. But in any case, uh, what I want to do today is... Oh, uh, before I move on, one thing I didn't mention last time. One of the drawbacks of this rail station layout here coming off of this branch is that we can only enter from one direction. Um... So the drawback of this is, is that any trains that need to get to these stations are going to have to come from this side. They won't be able to come this way. So um, that's something to keep in mind if you're implementing this in your own base. Um, that could cause some traffic problems, but I, I'm hoping that it won't be too much of an issue. All right, so I want to make aluminum and brass. And we'll start with aluminum. So I set up... Um, in uh, Helmod, I set up some some recipes for this. So uh, if we start with the aluminum, um, we make that from molten aluminum, obviously. That comes from aluminum ingots. 
Aluminum ingots are made from carbon and alumina. Alumina is made from aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum hydroxide is made from sodium hydroxide and processed aluminum, uh, which is made from aluminum ore. And then the sodium hydroxide we can get from saline water. All right, so uh, if I've done all this correctly, then I should already have the machines that I'm going to need in my inventory. Um, I think we should probably use some landfill over here so I can make some space. I'm going to leave some water though. I don't want to use up all the landfill. Actually, I'm going to drive my train over there just so I'm closer. So I don't have to run so far to get back to the train. So let's do that. I'm going to come down here and turn right. And then turn right again. And then turn... Yeah, turn right again. There we go. Alright. And I'll park right here. Oh, let's get the landfill. Okay, so I think what we could do is I'll just fill in like from here. I'll leave a little bit of water here because uh, that way I can tap into it for uh, for my sodium hydroxide production and anything else I might need water for in the future. Uh, let's fill that in. You know what, let's just do this. There. So we got a nice, neat little water supply. All right. So let's uh, let's flesh out the main portion of it before we get into the production of the byproducts. All right, so we're going to start with two ore processing machines. And these are going to be making processed aluminum from the ore. All right, and then those have to go into powder mixers. One, two, three. Where we are going to make aluminum hydroxide from processed aluminum. Okay, and this is where we need to bring in the sodium hydroxide as well. Um... So actually, let me let me make a little bit more space there. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, that way we can bring in a belt for the sodium hydroxide. So let me just see here what we need for inserters. Basic inserters in. Okay, yeah, yellows and reds will be more than fast enough. Okay. So we'll go like that. Hmm. The three to two, or the two to three is um, kind of an issue. Right here we're fine, but then I don't have an inserter. I don't have room to get the other stuff in. So I think we're going to have to space these out a bit more. Actually, if I just put, if I put one space, yeah, this will work. Let's see. Let's put a yellow belt here. Um. Yeah, I'll put the I'll put the hydroxide over there. All right, so if we put the yellow there, then we can get one in. Yeah, either way, this is going to have to be we'll have to be a bit creative here with the inserters. All right, so this one we're going to have to pick up from 
over there. Okay, I think that'll work. Whoops. And then we'll be loading the sodium hydroxide. And then in this case, we need to drop off at an angle. Actually, I only need one of those. Okay. And this power pole here almost, almost covers everything. But not quite, so we'll put some extra ones. <clears throat> okay. And then from here, we're going to go into a blast furnace. Where are my blast furnaces? I know I made some. Here they are. Okay. And we'll have to use some adjustable inserters there too. All right, so in this case, we are making alumina. Drop off there. And this is going to need fuel. Uh, but we also are going to need carbon here. So we'll use carbon for the fuel. All right. And then from that, we make aluminum ingots. And we'll need carbon there as well. Um, one, two, three. Yeah, let's do this. All right, now the output there, if I use fast inserters, I will need one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll put a fast inserter and I'm going to make it long. This is faster than a red inserter. If you use a fast inserter and extend it, Okay, and then we can have a belt. It's gonna have to come this way. We can have a belt coming here with the carbon. Whoops, like so. And then we'll feed in carbon like that. So that'll take care of the fuel for both furnaces. Okay, let's throw a light there. Uh, let's throw, I'll just, oh, I'm out of lights. Fortunately, I have a bunch in the train. All right. Okay, now from here, we will have the ingots. So a single fast inserter on the output. Although here, I think I'm gonna use, yeah, what is this? This produces 24 every four seconds. Yeah, so rather than use that, I think, I think it would be better. No, I guess that'll be okay. Yeah, that'll be okay. I was going to say that I should use a stack inserter, but uh, eventually they'll get they'll get caught up. Okay, um, and then from here we go into two induction machines, which I already have here. Okay, so actually I will have two outputs like that. Okay, and these are going to make molten aluminum. Where is it? All right, and we're gonna use the recipe. Now we can later use manganese for this, but I'm not making any manganese, so I'm just gonna use that recipe for now. And then I will rotate like that. And then I set this up just to, to run six casting machines. One, two, three. 
One, two, three. One, two, three. There. Okay, and then I'll just use stone pipe. Let me put the outputs here on this side. Okay, and these are making aluminum plate. And then we'll output on a yellow belt. And then for right now, I'll just load them into a chest. All right, and these are going to make four every four seconds. All right, so a yellow belt is going to be fine for that, or a yellow inserter, rather. Okay, so that's aluminum. Uh, let's see, what do we need on these inputs? Okay, yellow inserters feeding in there. Okay, and then I'm just going to use a yellow belt to bring in the ore, uh, which will come in from way over here. And I probably don't have enough yellow belts on me. All right, so we'll use red belts instead. All right, so I'll set this up here. We'll filter this for aluminum ore. There we go. We'll jump across the tracks here. And bring it over this way. started. Okay, so now we need the sodium hydroxide, which is a byproduct. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. The sodium hydroxide is a byproduct of the saline water. So what I need is the saline water. Oh, I can make that from chloric wastewater. Okay, let's do that. And I need hydro plants, which I did not craft in advance. And I don't have the ingredients. Oh, I can't do hydro plant twos yet. All right, so for the Mark 1s, I'm going to have to get some more iron. I need quite a lot of these, apparently. Seven and a half. Uh, what if I do this by water purification? Let's try that again. What if I do that by water purification? I still need 7.5. And probably... Well, I might have to do both, to be honest, because I don't know if I'm making enough chloric wastewater. But we'll do it with the chloric wastewater because we need to find a way to use these byproducts anyway. All right, so let's head back to the base so I can get some materials to make the hydro plants and then we'll come back and set that up. And I just realized I forgot to set my timer when I started here. Looks like I've been going for 20 minutes. So, I'll have to take that into account. 
All right, let's get some. Look at all these bots getting busy when the when the boss arrives. All right, we need stone brick. Do I have stone brick in here? I should probably. I should probably expand the robot network to bring stone brick down here, just so I can get to it quickly when I need it. Cause I'm getting getting tired of having to run all the way up here every time. Whoa, watch out. Yeah, you know what, I'll just... As a matter of fact, I'll just put a bunch in the car. And then I can put this in those warehouses up there. Whoops. Let's go. All right. I wonder if there's a way to make it not beep when I do that. That would be nice. So let's open this. Okay. Great. All right. How many do I have? Six, and I need two more. One, two. All right. Let's head back. Just go into manual mode once I get around the corner here. And I want to turn here. Of course, I pushed the wrong direction. It's hard when you're driving upside down in reverse. Because I'm in this one, not in this one. Seems like a good place to stop. Okay. So, chloric water purification. Uh, I think we could put that over here. So let's... Let's see if I can put... See if I have enough. Well, I don't want to. No, I better not do that. Let's just get it as close as we can to where we need it. But I will put it on this side. Two. All right, let's do this the easy way. Chloric wastewater purification. Light, light, or. Er, Power, power, light, light. And what is this giving me? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is only giving me the saline. And then from the saline, I have to make the sodium hydroxide. Okay. All right. And then I'll just do this. That way it makes it very easy to tile this. Okay, so there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I can remove that, I can remove that, and remove that. Okay, good. Now, let's get the chloric wastewater over there. I think I'll use the 
bronze pipes for that since we have a long way to travel. And if I'm not mistaken, it's this one right here. Quirk. Yep. Alright, so... Uh, we'll probably want a pump. Let's make a couple of clarifiers. I'm going to need, okay, I have one big tank and three small tanks. Now the purified water, yeah, I, you know, I'll just, I'll put the purified water into a tank first just in case. Actually, before I do that, I got a recommendation that I think is a good one to use non-return valves on the entrance of tanks. That way if the pipe empties out, fluid won't backflow from the tank back into the input side. I don't know how necessary that is, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Seems like it's a good idea. Okay, and then I need a couple, couple overflow valves. And the overflow can go into the clarifier. Okay, and now we use the electrolyzers on the saline. And I wonder if... Well, we'll just do it like that. No, actually, let's... One, two, three, four. Yeah, let's do it like this. Okay. And these are going to be this one. Sodium hydroxide. All right, and on the output, a single yellow inserter on each one. Whoops. All right. And then we need to send this to the north. I wonder if I can jump across that. No, I can't. So we'll have to come around it. Hopefully I have enough belt. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've got to deal with the gases that we're making here, too. So I need a couple of flare stacks. Was this making hydrogen and chlorine? Okay. Oops.
Okay. There we go. Okay, great. So we're making aluminum hydroxide. Now we just need to bring in the carbon. And for that, I am going to need to add a train station on this side to receive it. And my thinking is that we can set this up the same way on the other side. using this style of train station. Um, and back in the main base, I did already set up, I set this up, um, taking some of the coke that we're making over here for power, converting that into carbon, and then I fed it into a train station over here. So carbon is already available for pickup. Now this is short term, uh, one of the things in fact, we'll add it to our to-do list. Uh, we'll need to do a coal processing plant pretty soon. Uh, that'll be off-site, maybe next to the coal mine, where we will convert coal into coke and carbon and whatever else we need from coal. Those are the main things that I can think of now. Um, but for now, we can do it this way. All right, so, yeah, so let's, um, let me copy some of these stations. I just want to miss that signal there. There we go. All right, so let's, let's assume that we do two of them. Get rid of all these belts. And these belts. And that one. And we'll get rid of those power poles. And I'm not sure if this is going to work flipped over. Yeah, I think it will. Yeah, that should work. Get rid of this here. And we don't need that. And we don't need that. Houses, which I don't have the materials for, so uh, we'll leave those pending. Uh, I need some combinators. Okay, so we'll call this smelting. carbon. And I think we'll eventually bring in some other stuff too, but for now it'll just be for the carbon. Okay. Um, now in this case I don't want any inputs. The inputs are only going to be by train. And this is actually configured as a This is configured as a provider station, so I need to change this to a receiver station. And in this case, I need to flip these around. 
because I'm going to pull it out from here. Like that. Actually, let's use a red belt. All right, so I'm going to filter this for carbon, which is there. Okay, and then let me see how I have my receiving stations configured. Let's find one. Here we go. All right, yeah, I just need to set my thresholds. So one train, and then we're gonna set the provide threshold to a very high number so that we don't pick up anything from here. And then we'll set the request threshold to, well, no, I'm just, I'll just leave it. The default is a thousand. Okay, and then we need Another one of these. And we're going to request carbon. And let's ask for, I don't know how much I need. Um, let's ask for 5,000. Just want to take a look here and make sure that this works. Looks like the train is already on the way, which is a good sign. Okay, and I think I have 10,000. Yeah, I think I started with 10,000 in there, if I'm not mistaken. Four thousand. This is definitely slower than the bulk rail loaders. Okay, five thousand, and it's on the way back. I'm going to turn that off for now, and that should enter from this way, since we're on the top side of the tracks. Okay, manual, because I need to turn these around. Okay, that didn't work. Um, oh, right. Actually, I don't think, I don't think I need I don't think I need filter stack inserters here to unload. I think I can just use regular stack inserters. All right. Like that. All right, and this is, this is not working properly either. All right, let's see here. So we're taking this times minus one. All right, yeah, I need to, I need to flip, I need to flip this around. Okay, so let me get rid of my stuff here. And then that'll leave now. All right, great. Oh, my train is in the way. Okay, you go back to the passenger station. There we go. Um, okay. So let me pick all this up. Let's put it all in there just to make sure that I have this working properly. All 
Okay, good. Excellent. All right, and now we just feed this over. And let's just run it along here. There, and this should give us aluminum if I haven't screwed something up. Looks like we just got another delivery of carbon. Awesome. And here comes the alumina. I want to check. I want to check where else aluminum ingots are used. Chrome. I don't know if we're ever going to use chrome. Okay, it can be used for titanium. I want to make a small change here, and, and I thought of doing this earlier, and then I've since forgotten about it. Let me copy this. I'll wait for this to finish fabricating until it's empty. I'm just happy to have aluminum plates. I don't want to waste any. Okay. All right, so let's pick this up. Basically, what I want to do is... In this area, I want to put all of the I want to put all of the ingots into storage before I convert them into anything else. Um, but I need I need warehouses, or should I just use silos? I can't even make more silos because I'm out of iron. All right. Let's go back and get some supplies. I want to put it into a warehouse first. <clears throat> because um, for a lot of the metals, you can mix different types of ingots to get more efficient recipes. And that'll be easiest to accomplish if the ingots are going into some kind of a, a chest or other storage device. Before they go into the rest of the process. I think I'll just use silos though. I like the warehouses, but they're so big and I don't really need that much storage. I just need a little buffer. In fact, we could maybe even just use big chests. Those take 18 iron plates each. Silos. No, I'll use silos. That way I can get... That way I'll have... Um, it'll be a 4x4 four four item. And that should allow me to get there. Alright, so now I've got 10 silos. I guess I didn't really need to come back. But uh, with the silo, at least you have four spaces on each side to put loaders. Whereas with a big chest, you would only have two. Now, two might be enough, but um, yeah, let's do big chests. I changed my mind again. Sorry. All right. I'm going to make a stack of big chests, and we'll do those instead. All right. Let's get back over there.
all the way over here. And big chests. Where are they? Here they are. Okay. Nope, I'm doing silos. That big chest just doesn't look very impressive. <laughs> okay, and then after the big chest, or after the silo. We'll go into the induction machines. There we go. Okay. Yeah, we'll use silos. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Well, that seems to be running quite well. I am only getting hydroxide from one side. Oh, you know what? I bet I used up all the chloric wastewater already. Yeah, I did. So that's got not, that's not going to be enough, uh, and that means I'm probably going to need more. I'm going to need more of these so that I can make saline from from water, from water purification, in addition to the chloric wastewater. So um, I'll set that up. I mean, I'm getting saline water here too. Actually, I'm. Jiminy Christmas. I'm sometimes I'm not as smart as I wish I was. <laughs> oh man. Alright, well why don't we use all this saline water that we're happily producing? Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's let's come down here instead. Okay. All right, so now we've got saline water coming in as well, but I need to put an underflow valve because I only want it to come in when I'm not making it from the chloric wastewater. Okay, so this way um, if I have chloric wastewater available, I'll use it. Otherwise, I'll use the saline from here. Um, and that means that I should put that into a tank. All right, well, I've got a small tank. I'll use, use a couple of those. And let's just use one. There we go. There we go. Where's my one-way valve? There. Okay. Um, and actually, I should have... I should have an overflow valve on this, too. So if it gets backed up... No, that's right. Yeah, because I still wanna, I still wanna clarify if, if we get backed up with saline water. All right, um, to there. Okay, so this way we'll store up a little bit of it. We'll pump it out to be used if needed. If not, it'll clarify it. 
but right now we should be it should be flowing and it is actually this is not gonna work because this will let it in anytime it drops no no that'll work that'll work As long as it drops a little bit, then these machines will be able to add to it. So, yeah, I think that'll be fine. All right, so let's see how we're doing up here. This appears to be working okay. We're not accumulating too much aluminum ingot, which is fine. Uh, we're filling up our chest. So I'll take two stacks for myself. And we'll just let that chest fill up for now. Uh, and then in the next episode, we will set up brass smelting right next to it. Um, brass has got a different set of requirements, obviously. Uh, different byproducts are needed. Oxygen. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be making it from copper and zinc. So we'll have to bring two ores up here. So we'll do that in the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.